As designers, we're good at designing for others, but sometimes can be terrible at designing for ourselves. Our portfolio should be where we shine without the constraints that other projects present. Uh, we are our own stakeholders in a sense, but sometimes because of this freedom, we tend to overanalyze, overcomplicate, and forget that the design process is also applicable here. If you're in transition to UX design or product design, or you're looking for your next role and not sure how to structure your portfolio, then this video is for you. Here are five tips to consider when designing your portfolio. Number one, consider your portfolio's personas. So just as in any regular project, you would consider the end users of the application, you ought to consider who will be reviewing your portfolio. In most cases, you have a recruiter and hire manager reviewing both your portfolio and resume. You want to keep that in mind and you have limited time to make an impression and your audience is likely reviewing 50 other portfolios. So a recruiter might be checking to see your overall design experience as well as company fit in order to pass along your resume to the hiring manager while the hiring manager is focused on your design aptitude and the depth of your design experience. So you wanna keep these true personas in mind while designing your portfolio. Number two, understand the problem your portfolio is trying to solve. You should hone in on the problem that each persona is trying to solve and their goals. For example, the recruiter might be focused on bringing awesome, wholesome people, not just designers, to the company. So you want, in addition to your skills, your personality to shine um, in your portfolio. For instance, on my personal site, I have a section for my personal values, testimonials of my work, shout outs, contents that I create, and so on. While on the other hand, the hiring manager is trying to grow his or her team of designers who will help move the product vision forward. So you should highlight projects that show the depth of your skills. For instance, instead of listing your projects, you could list the categories of projects like branding, illustration, visual design, 3D design, and so on. At a high level, listing categories shows your range of expertise at a glance to a hiring manager, and when they click into each category, they can see the projects you worked on. On average, it takes about six to seven seconds to for a, for a recruiter or hiring manager to look at your resume, according to Indeed, and about three minutes or less on your portfolio. So overall, you have three minutes to help hiring managers and recruiters potentially solve your problem and make a good impression with your resume and portfolio. Number three, think scannability. I have reviewed a number of portfolios lately and a single project sometimes can take the entire three minutes to scan through because of how detailed they are. In my opinion, super long portfolios can play to your advantage if you do it right. So, if you remember our persona from earlier, a hiring manager and recruiter with over 50 plus resumes and portfolios to review, averaging three minutes per portfolio, who are looking to build the design team and bring awesome people to the company. So with this knowledge of the level of demand on your time, you should want to keep it simple and design your portfolio in a way that makes it easier to scan quickly. From my experience, most hiring managers don't have the time to sit and re read through your entire portfolio, but they have about three minutes to get a gist of it. So spend some time and think through how you would architect your portfolio in a way that allows your audience to quickly get to a favorable decision on your behalf. For example, let's say you did a ton of stuff on your project that resulted in a very lengthy portfolio project. You also realize it will take more than three minutes to scan through one of four projects. Now, this can be a good thing because it shows how detailed you are and alternatives you've considered um, if that's the case. However, to help reduce the cognitive effort required to scan through the portfolio project, you can utilize the very top section of your portfolio to highlight each section with a short description and a hyperlink to that section within the project itself. This is similar to how some lengthy blog posts provide like an overview at the top section before diving into the article. And even better if you can use pictures to illustrate this. Having the what to expect section should give your persona a quick overview of your design process as well as the project itself. Number four, a consistent story format. Now a consistent story goes hand in hand with scannability. 
when it comes to your portfolio, think of it as telling a story. You should have a technique that works for you, but most portfolios tend to start with the problem, who you're solving the problem for, the design process, and then the solution. Now, I've seen some portfolios start with the problem solution before diving into the process. I tend to find those a little bit confusing uh, as they seem to be more solution focused as opposed to user focused. And maybe I'm missing something here. So uh, please let me know. I'm definitely open to growing and uh, expanding on my knowledge base. So let's say you have four projects in your portfolio. They should have a similar story format but different context as well as content. So this would ultimately make it easier to scan your portfolio projects. Number five, emphasize the impact of your design. For a lot of designers, I know this can be a hard one. Measuring the impact of your design can be hard for several reasons that may be out of your control. For example, you worked on a project that got handed over to the client, now the client has moved on, harder to track, design impact um, in that case, or the designs you worked on didn't get shipped and so on. But for the ones that are within your reach, you should seek to quantify the impact of your designs. And there are several ways to do that. Your quantifiable metrics should tie back to the problem you set out to solve in the first place. And you should emphasize the impact of your design in your portfolio projects. An example impact could be changing the shop now button color from black to red, increased the click through rate by 25%, which resulted in $25,000 in monthly sales. Another example could be that onboarding took 30 minutes, but the new designs brought it down to like three minutes or less. Also, let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video on how I measure the impact of my designs. So those are five tips to consider when working and designing your portfolio. Do you have other tips that I might have missed or didn't mention here that you feel like will be valuable for designers, new designers, transitioning uh, uh, individuals that are transitioning into design that will be helpful for them to know? Please share that in the comment section below. If you've learned something new, share the knowledge with others by hitting the share button. If you're interested in more content like this, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and join the channel by subscribing and tapping on the notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. See you in the next one.